very sorry for the break in transmission. You know, um, internet connection, wahala, but, but I'm just happy that we are back live. And please, uh, there's flames of love. Do send in your comments. Today we are discussing premarital sex, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's um, all interact. This is not a monologue, but a dialogue. We need your, your questions, your contributions to make this a solid program. So I, I was talking about... Um, um, does it does premarital sex strengthen or does it weaken relationships and marriages? Okay, so um, it's both. It can strengthen and at the same time it can also weaken relationships. Mm -hmm. When I want to talk about it strengthening relationship, um, when the two people come together, there's some kind of a bond. So then maybe for some people it will bond them together and then strengthen their relationship. Again, if things don't go well, and then maybe this relationship ends, now that um, burden, that guilt of, or that pain of losing somebody you've had an intimate relationship with, that, that thing is not going to, you're going to live with that burden now. Mm -hmm. So then knowing that, oh, this person actually, we went this far, and now this thing didn't work, I have to move on to the next person. I probably have another sexual relationship with that person. If it doesn't go well, then that's it, the multiple burden and the guilt. And then some might not even decide to go into it again because what's the point? After going into it, this or two times, three or four times, this guy has slept with me, this one has slept with me, it didn't work. For some two, they might be lucky, just one, they born, and then off they go. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say. Okay, that's a weekly or strengthened relationship. Well, I, I believe that it strengthens the relationship. It, it makes you know each other well. It, it gives you some strong bonding mm. at that period. And it even draws uh, some line around you or builds some edge around you that makes you not really want to leave this person. You, 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 you want to have more of the person. So I believe that it helps and it, it, uh, it promotes um, intimacy among couples. You know, it's, it's, it, it, whether we like it or not, this has come to stay. It's not even. You know, we, we try to dance around it in an era of morality. But the truth is this. When the days when our mothers looked for a, a wife for us and our fathers looked for a husband for us, those days are gone. Those were the days where um, you meet, this person is brought to you, whether you like it or not, you accept the person and... The day you get to see your nakedness is the, the day of your marriage or something like that. Now you go out there, you look out for the person, you have to scan, you have to turn, turn the person in every, in every way and all of that. And in those times, you don't need to date a person for a long time. I mean, you are brought together and well, by this time I'm dating you for one year, two years, three years, four years. Some, some are in it for seven years. Okay, there's a there, there is a couple that um I I, I, I blessed their marriage, I think, last year. They had been together as boyfriend, girlfriend, 10 years. Do you want me to ask them whether they had sex or not? 10 years. You understand me? So these things will happen. It will happen, and it happens. Mostly because of how long we stay in a relationship. How long can a person hold on? When you love this person, you want to have them. You, you see, when you love the person, there is a way you want to be with, around them and all of that. It will generate some kind of feeling. And by the time you realize, you want to kiss the person. You kiss the person, something. One thing leads to the other, and today you might be able to hold yourself. How about tomorrow? And how long can you be able to hold yourself until that next year, next two years that you are going to get married? So it's easier to tell people that, oh, don't do it, it's a sin, it's a sin. Yeah, it's, you can, we can preach that. But what is it on the ground? That thing, that, that hungry person that you are telling them, you are telling them, don't steal the food. There is food, this person is hungry, dying of hunger. You say, don't steal. It's not going to be an easy thing. I think you should be able to tell the person the dangers of stealing as well. Oh, yes, yes. So the, the day you decide to, um, make a move, you must understand that every decision comes with plus and minuses. Every decision you make comes with plus and minuses. 
because um we have not decided we have not started talking about the minuses that is why i have not ventured into it no, but she asked. That's what well, she well if, if we are going to talk about the minuses there is std okay so wait and all of that I, mm. want, I want to find out um we were talking about it earlier but um, because of the break in transmission i want us to go back you know most people um, argue that the uh, practice makes man perfect therefore they would want to go into premarital sex so they will be perfect when they marry now i want to find out does this um, um, technique hold some kind of true is this is this assertion true that private pra uh, practice make man perfect therefore if you engage in uh, premarital sex you'll be perfect when you marry does it hold some true um yes and no yes because like i earlier on said practice actually that's what they say it makes people perfect mm. so as you probably keep sleeping with people before marriage you explore so many kinds of sexual styles, whatever you is there to explore. But then, yet again, when you get into marriage, remember, if you do not get married to that same person you were exploring all these sexual styles with, probably you get married to another person, he might not necessarily know the kind of styles you have come or doing. So now you have so many styles, maybe if unfortunately the person don't have much styles, Look at it some more again. It's like this person here yeah, when they break power. Mm -hmm. And you know the way our society, the way we're brought up, our morals, everything in that. Now you are, your, your character is beginning to be questionable. Then, yet again, I know there are a few times that people, even in marriage, they have issues. Somebody will say, oh, and because you used to so many people, so now the other partner might look down on your experience. You thought of oh, bringing a lot of sexual experience into the marriage. Should have helped, so I want to polish you and train you for more. You probably you don't know much, I have a lot of experience. But the person is also going to see you as a person is actually spoke to us, or they were saying about an answer, or whatever. And you know, stars need you or what. And so then there's that perception, and it can also lead to other things in marriage. So then the trust and some other things. Hey, maybe if I don't do it the way this person likes it, the person can actually go back. There are people in marriages who are actually also sometimes they will be wondering this. One, whilst making that to this person, they're actually imagining the one they do with some, the heart, some other people, and all these things. It has, for me, premarital sex itself has too many disadvantages for me to accept that it should be part of us. Seriously. Is that a um, 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 sentence? Does it hold some truth that practice make perfect so you should engage in it? Private make perfect. In some extent, but not in sex when you want to get married. I, I, I don't I don't um, propagate that for people that want to get married. I prefer that uh, the couple will not have any sexual um, history mm. prior to their marriage. With that, you don't have anything to compare it to. There will be no comparison. You understand me? There will be no comparison that okay, whether she lies down on the back or turn or that. There's not, nothing like that. And I mean, even if you have not had any experience, there are many ways to learn. You can exactly. check uh, 21st century sex guide, lover's guide. I mean, there, 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 are, there, are many, there, are, there are many of them that you can learn as a couple together. You understand me? But the danger of that one also is that your partner may see a body type in that video or picture and may be attracted to such body type. So every way that you turn it, there are plus and minuses. Mm. You see, you might decide to watch 21st century sex guide. Then in that video, there is a guy who, who has a particular body shape that may attract your, your wife. And your wife from that video will start looking out for a person like that without you knowing. Or your husband may see a breast size that he really likes. But you, you never, you, you never talk. Even in the first. <laughs> the but this one, you want to actually experience it and you are bringing it into the marriage. Well? Because if watching alone can actually lead somebody in there, mm. then and you are you engaging in it, maybe even if not with one partner, but multiple people. Okay. The other side is that the person who had had experience decided that I have seen big breasts medium breast and small breast and I have decided to take this size of breast you understand me but this person had not had any encounter with these sizes 
and just choose one that he said he loved. Mm. You know, no, normally it's okay, I like the way you are. No, no, no. But, but when that feeling is off, you tend to look at how they really look like. Okay, both naked and covered. You begin to look at that. Mm. So, getting to know them covered and uncovered, I believe it's good. It's good to know both sides. But if you are able to hold yourself together and not have it, that is also right. But I don't want us to box people into this shape that you you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to. I know people from a church that because they are from the church, same church and they have been preached to mm. that they shouldn't have said before marriage. This is pretending to be that faithful person because you are the one I want to marry, but I can't even propose sex to you because of our background. And he is having sex with a lady outside. And truth be told, he said, I don't have any feelings for her as a uh, feeling as in, in the context of love. Mm. I, I just want to have sex, but I can't have it with this person because the way I mention it, the way the person will respond with judgment. How the person will be very judgmental and say, You may say that this is trivial, but you have not been there, so you will not understand. This is happening, this is happening, and we must get to the point of telling them that listen, this will happen. So, how do we protect you if this is going to happen? Probably no, I think this one is as a result of weak morals, mm. or probably we are not doing our things right because even before biblical things. Even with our forefathers and the kind of movies and stories we hear, mm. in those days, well, how come they have this Bagua and all those things? Those are so women. No, wait. These are women mm. who were able to keep themselves. Guys were able to keep themselves. That's, you that's go into it. Way. Yes, you go into it. There are instances. Yes, that's, that's not entirely true. Look at that age. Okay, pick our age. Huh? No, there are and, and and go back. And check how many of our parents really got married. You know, because they stayed together for a long time, we said they married. Most of our age mates, most of our age mates, their parents never got married. They cohabited or they just had said that they, they, they gave birth. We, we are not telling ourselves the truth in these cases. In these cases, I know many people that no, when the husband, when the wife married, dies, right? when the wife dies, mm. that is when. The man is coerced to marry the, the, the corpse. Okay? Because they never did it. And it's not one thing. It's, I mean, most people, most people, they are living together as a couple, but they were not married. But they preached it to us as if they were married before. Okay. It was not right. That is the point. But I'm not saying we should not make it seem as if the, the current generation is worse. They copied it from the previous generation. And that is what we, we need to understand. We must not make it feel as if they were more moral, morally upright than this time. Okay, so uh, um, I understand your that point way. very well. But I, I want to find out. Is premarital, should it be an expression of love? Because if I love you, I should be able to wait. You say you can't wait. So is, that, is, 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 it, is it the only prerequisite to show that you love me? And who you need sex? Sex is the only, only thing to show that they love you. Who said so? Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be the case. And it all boils down to our values as, as a society. What are our values? Okay, so the thing is, in the first place, why are we saying premarital sex? It's not good. Like I keep saying, for me, reading through and studying through, the only thing I could say is that you gain experience mm -hmm. as a sexual experience. But then the dangers that comes along with some of these F or with this premarital sex, it's just too much to allow ourselves to go into it. And in any case, you can go into it as a novice. Marriage as a novice, you don't have you haven't had sex before. Like we said, there are so many areas that you can learn, explore, even you can learn on the job, on the job training, maybe in the East, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, that's why they have other TV programs and stuff like that. You watch it, you learn, you learn music, and then it is the kind of sexual activities and styles probably they were doing today. Now people have come up with so many crazy ideas and crazy styles that, you know, are helping. So there can never be a static thing to say that this is it. But for me, love, the basis of love in marriage or whatever relationship should not be sex. Because then we will go about, because there are people who get married and they might have 
I had relations with about five or four guys, all in the name of all ladies, studying people. So if the prerequisite um, uh, thing is only about sex, then you end up sleeping with everybody that comes along, all in the name of love and bond and relationship and whatever. And if it doesn't work, you leave the person, you go for the next, and also when you want sexual styles or they back on, you go and also, and that one, what positive thing are you going to learn from it? I don't see any positive thing in this anyway. So for me, I don't it think be an I would go for it at all. Should sex um, be an expression of love? It, it, it depends on the person. We all we all have um, different interpretation of love. Our interpretation of love is different. Mm -hmm. Everyone has his own. Someone's own is touching, talking to you, gifting, and all of that. Some is sex. We all have different um, love languages. Okay, we will not say that a person's own supersedes the other. Mm -hmm. She said there are dangers in having sex before marriage. That's true. And there are also dangers in you not having sex before marriage. But normally, we talk about the fact that there are so many dangers about uh, uh, having sex before marriage. But there are a lot of dangers if you decide not to have sex with this person before marriage. And we, 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 we don't want to talk about it. We, feel, we, we put it in, in a box. But the thing is happening. So if the thing is happening, then we should uncover it and find a way to make it safe. We should make it safe because we have been free to since well, before I was born, when I was born till today, we've been told that before marriage is not good. And people are still having sex. So why do you not find the re actual reason why they have the sex? And and how to make them have a safe sex? Because you will not stop them. Have the sex, but then it should be safe. safe. So now you are saying that we should be allowed to have sex. When we are not married, but then we should have safe sex. I mean, whether you allow it or not, they are you already having it. No, that's not the point. The point is, they are already having the sex. Right? That no, no, no. Right or wrong? That's why I said that I do not, I do not want to bring in, in in the aspect of my pastoral role. In whether my pastoral role, I I, I I am programmed to say it is it is wrong. In pastoral society, then well, society they will tell you that it's wrong. In so your face, that but they do it. The person that is telling you is wrong. is wrong. The person that is telling you is wrong is doing it. But the person is telling you is wrong because the person has been told is wrong. No, okay, so not because the person knows it's wrong. So because even the person that starts you down told you that hey, hey, you must marry before you do this. That person, that person had it so before the person. Had the person it. Is doing it doesn't make it okay. right. So let's say maybe the person did it, mm. and now the person is um has realized that um it wasn't good. So the person, with his or her experience, is trying to educate mm. or, um, the person from um, in, engaging, engaging in, it. in it. Okay, so what about that one? They, they, they are just telling you what they were told and not the truth. Because they can't tell you the truth that go and do it. No, 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 no mother, no father, no uncle, no, no sister would openly tell you that do it. They, can't, they won't tell you. But the truth is that they did it. They, 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 they are telling you don't do it because they were told not to do it because the society frowns on it. But not necessarily because they really, really think it's a bad thing. They know it. No, no, no. So, what are you saying, sir? That's premarital sex thing. Mm. It's not a bad thing. But then it is society and then church thing that is actually making us to say it's a bad it's thing. Right. Rather, we should advocate that people should do it, but then they should do it safely. No, I will not advocate that they should do it. What I'm saying is that. We should highlight the plus and minuses. We should not we should not highlight only the minuses because from day one, everything about it has been the negative, the negative, the negative, the negative. We tell them when you go and do it, you 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 get pregnant. When you go and do it, you yeah, your friend is saying you will um, get A's, you get this. And when the child does it, or yeah, or yeah, or yeah, and the child didn't get A's. They didn't get pregnant because they, 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 there is a female condom, there is a male condom, there is a morning after pill, and there, there is a, a friend is saying birth control pills. And the child doesn't get pregnant, they will begin to think that what you are telling them is not true. No. That is how you are that, educating that is, them. You see, that is how we are educating them, but this is it. When you start premarital sex, I have a young daughter who is now 13 years. I'm a mother. There's no way I'll call my daughter that will tell her, say, have premarital sex. Because you'll be very experienced and you know this kind of styles. No parents will do no, that. No, listen to me. Not because 
Probably I didn't do it, so I'm not telling it to you. I did it. And if I'm advising a child or I'm advising somebody about something, it should be something that one, me myself, probably have actually studied it and I realized it could be and yet and yet. And I weigh the good and the bad. I think say positive, no, and yet a dose is negative, so you can actually go this way. But then with this premarital sex we are talking about, like you said. Why would everybody say it is not good? It means that there must be something in there that probably is weightier than the positive. Mm -hmm. So let's say the positive, for me, like I keep saying, what I see is you have experience getting into marriage, probably if your partner doesn't know anything, who came along with a lot of sexual styles and probably skills and sex because you have had it. And now you are having to probably teach him or her and then you guys will move on. And again, like you are saying, you can have the unplanned pregnancies, you can have the STDs, then if they are breakouts, probably the person doesn't marry you, now you are born together, you love the person so much, you've been having all the sexual styles, and the person for some reason thinks, oh, my breath, let me go in for the next person. That, that pain of you losing that person is also there. Now you've also gone into marriage with all these skills and stuff that you have. Now your partner also thinks, hey, this person, you do concerning this thing for my liking, but I can on a normal day, it should have been a blast because you came with some kind of a sexual advantage. But the person feels that hey, now they won't grass house here waiting at training me. And probably if you also didn't keep on this, oh, maybe I've had multiple relationships, uh, you know, I went through a lot, or I've been sleeping with this person and that person, and unfortunately, you are now in and you've come to marry me already. You know, my mind is. But what do we say that? Oh, people do. People do. Maybe just for you to know, I love you too much. You know? mm -hmm. Oh, I've gone through a lot. You know, the kind of um, guys have used me. Where where you near you? Where where near you? So I'm so worried. You don't know. People do. Like, hey, when they are in some cloud nine, in some elements. Exactly. Your back can be there. Okay, so mm -hmm. now I, I want to find out. Generally, you know me. I don't think that this is my little thing. In the young home. Then let's learn, let's explore, let's ask questions. When we get to the point, they do this program, so, uh, and all these things they've been doing on TV. Mm. We can decide to watch stuff. It's a late night program. We can decide to listen. We can go for counseling. Whatever. I learn. You go together. That's what I believe. Some don't have the opportunity because maybe one way or the other, the person might have been raped, the person might have been abused, the person, those are exceptional cases. Or the person found him or herself maybe vulnerable and then people took advantage of those are different but this is a well-meaning person who actually makes a decision that every guy that comes close to me or decides to say i love and i want to be with you the next thing to do is to sleep with the person just for the person to know say this is my way of expressing love no i don't think it's right. okay so now I, I, I want to say something mm -hmm. i didn't say that everybody does this what I said, we all have an expression of love. We are all different. We are all different. Some is just a sexual drive. Mm. Some, it is an act of love. That is, we, we should understand this because everybody has a different sex, uh, uh, love language. Mm. She says something, and that has been a very big problem in many marriages. Where, that, that has even changed a lot of women that they can't even ask for sex in marriage. With what she said that, um, you 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 express yourself sexually in a way, and the person goes like, okay, you have been wayward before. You see, sometimes you you have been, you might have even read something that you want to mm -hmm. uh, practice it with uh, explore with yeah. each other, and but the person begins to look at you in a certain way. We have made sex to be so obscured that it is difficult to even express ourselves in it. Even there are sexual positions that. Even married people, some married people, they don't want to even try because they see it as a sin. I'm not saying a way of sex, but I'm saying sexual positions. You see, when it comes to sex before marriage, I'm not thinking that any parent is going to sit their child down and say that, go and have it. That is not what anyone wants. That's, maybe I'm not being understood. But what I'm saying is that we tell people that, listen, this is bad. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But in case you find yourself in it, do this, do this, do that. That is what I'm talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are not you are not for it. 
But you are saying in case someone uh, engages in it yeah. or go and do it or find him or herself. Yes, yes. Like yes. I said, yes. but, but no, normally, yes. no, my problem has been that normally we just tell them it's not good, don't go. If you do it, this will happen, this will, they will leave that side. Some form of uh, condemnation. Condemnation. We don't, we don't tell them that, okay, this is not good. You might get pregnant. Maybe you go and do an abortion, it will affect your uh, womb, blah, blah, blah. You tell them all these things, okay? Then you tell them the other side that listen, my child, in case you do it, or in case you want to do it, even though I don't want you to do it, looking at all these dangers, in case you want to do it, this is the safe way to do it. We must present them with the plus and minuses. There is a way to scare people. You can raise their, their negative very high. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Um, uh, or you should push them to do it. No, but you should also let them know how to be safe in case they, they run into it. But when it comes to sex, it's a different ball game. Though. It, it's not only about the, let's say, the pregnancies, the abortions, and all that. There's some kind of um, emotional attached to it. So even in going to advise somebody who is not married to go into it in the first place, it's a bit dangerous. No, no, you will not tell the person. You see, that, that maybe I'm not. No, I understand what you're saying, but what don't I'm saying. Don't tell the person to go into it. All I'm but saying draw is a picture that for the person. And whatever we are looking mm. at, when mm. it comes to premarital sex, mm. sex for me is giving your all. Because what mm. is there again to see after you have seen it all? So for somebody that you are not married to, mm. and I want to advise you that, yeah, I've told you all about the negative side. Now I want to look at the positive side. I, if you ask me, I'll tell you, say, look, my child, the only positive thing I can tell you about premarital sex is you get a lot of sexual experience, rich sexual experience for yourself. I don't know what you're going to do that for any of you. Maybe you carry it into your mind. If, by the grace of God, you find a man who also has another rich sexual experience, and then you go to a movie, you get to make that was a but if you're not fortunate, and then you find somebody who is not so rich with your experience and your mouth or whatever leads you to go and say, oh, I've been fortunate to be sleeping with so many guys who I have experienced. <laughs> you were experienced, man, you are bad at you. Mm. From the one, there's a, there's a problem. Okay, so now once you're talking about marriage, I want us to talk about marriage. How does it affect marriages? When the person has already in, um, engaged in premarital sex, how does it affect it when you are, you get married? Yeah, like we are saying, in getting married, remember, like I said, sex also comes with some kind of a bond. Mm. So if I have engaged in premarital sex, maybe one, two, three partners, I've been able to bond some way, somehow with them. I'm married to this guy. There's a likelihood that when I'm actually having sex with this person, my mind might be on. We brown men deserve one star only. And I wake up, I mean, feel it. It's just like, yeah, could you want me to feel it? You can wake up, you're boring. You know, and I mean, you wake up, you're too rigid. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got this, we're going to experience it, you know. So that for me, it's one problem. Because then, because you've had experiences, you have only your experiences, probably this person might not be doing it the way you, you've, you've liked it or you've enjoyed it before. Then there's going to be a problem. Number two, um, apart from everything, the person might, if the person also finds out that oh my partner has so much experiences and other things, some of them can even I say, what the make I say to you? Mm. A time is going to come again, poor I can even say it should be an issue, you know. I know for so uh only way we might even say, and you have to one up gym. And now we get a better idea. If you think I'm not doing it well, then go to the other person. And say, hey, then there's going to be problems. Mm -hmm. Then you yourself too. Probably you didn't like some of the experiences you've had before. You are living with that guilt, mm -hmm. that burden in your mind. So you are not happy. You are not happy. And it can also lead to um, 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 what, what do I most? cheating. Mm -hmm. Because if you think, say, we won't mean here. You might be married and then you might go back to whoever is doing it well and then you'll be getting it from there because it can away on them to the level that open mm -hmm. and you might not also be able to open up to say so I want you to do it to this level for me for whatever reasons. So then you have to be going back to whoever. And I think that can also affect your marriage. 
how how does but grammar resolve you? You come in with an experience. <laughs> <laughs> So, so well, how, how does premarital sex affect mm. um, the marriage? What she said earlier, when you tell a child that you will enter into a marriage with much experience, you might want you you, you might trigger something in that child that would make the child want to go. No, there. no, no. I said if the no, child no. decides that I want to be doing premarital sex, then I tell you said the only advantage you can gather from there is much sexual experience. Yes, that was so what that I'm talking awareness. about. Because the moment you tell somebody that you're going to get much sexual experience, they might want to do it. Mm. That's what I am saying is this that tell the person that A, you're going to get pregnant, maybe you don't want it, especially when it's a, a girl. Yeah. You know, we will, come in, we will come into the negatives, but I just want to find out how does it affect marriages after, after we have married? Mm. How does it affect marriage? Already. Already. You've done it already, and now I am married. Maybe probably I didn't end up with the man I had the sex with. I ended up with another person, a new person. How is it going to affect the that um, relationship, the marriage? She she says something, and she said that to me, I'm quoting it. She said to me, sex is everything. You see, but there are people that sex is nothing for them. Sometimes we think that um, everybody values sex the way we do. We are all not the same. There are those that they can have sex with you right now. There is no, they, when they see you, there is nothing. There is no feeling, there, there, no strings. And there are those that they will never be able to detach themselves away from me emotionally until they die. We are all not the same. That is my point. To those who cannot detach themselves, it becomes a problem for them when they marry. Because anytime they see that person they had slept with before, there's something that happens mm. when when they even meet them in a social gathering, they begin to behave awkward. Or knowingly, they, they, when they see them, they begin to behave some way. So it affects their marriage in that setting. And if you are you are with a, a, a person that observes, you are like, ah, why is it any time that you see this person, you, you behave funny? You understand? So uh, it it affects in that way. And also there are those that um, the moment they enter into the marriage. I said some time ago, you must classify your information. It, it's not everything that you say. There are those that the moment they enter into the marriage, oh, this one is my ex boyfriend. We have we have dated before. Oh, this one, when I was in SS, he was the one that, when I was in SS, when I was in uni. So you have given certain information that you should not have given. And sometimes too much details. So the moment you do that, when you guys are together, Sometimes it's not every day that you, you, you smile and all you're like, why? Why are you not happy? Why am, not, am I not making you happy? Why am I not doing things the way uh, the lady you spoke to me about or the guy you spoke? You see, people begin to think in a certain way. So there are some things we don't talk about. You don't talk about it. I mean, even now in the morning time, uh, when we are growing up, when we are going to ask a girl, uh, one of the lines you add is, are you a virgin? Now we don't ask again. It's an abomination to ask. No, don't, don't try that line. You, you, you don't ask it, you see. If she is, she might tell you, but you will not try to ask in this time. You understand me? There are some things you should not say because it would affect the marriage negatively. You, you can have sexual relations with a million people. I'm not saying it is right, but what I'm saying is that the moment you make it known to your partner, it can, it's not a sex that destroyed the marriage, but the information you gave is what destroyed it. it, it it's very necessary. It's not every, the fact that you are married doesn't mean that you should say everything. I'm not saying you should hide information, but there are, you should be you should be like a colleague. You should see. Because any media here can. Some your, your your partner may be able to handle some things. They may not be able to handle certain things. So you have had it. You should not have, but you have. But if you decide to voice it out, you might make a problem, uh, bring up a problem where there isn't any. And the comparison that she said, where you'll be comparing because you have had one before. Maybe a lady, you have had a bigger one before. Then this one is smaller. There's a, there's a problem. But if you have had a smaller one, and this is a, a sizable one that fits correct for you, then I go like, ah, we're the mega papa. 
You see, it can be an advantage where you say, ah, because you, you met a wrong one. Maybe the one you even experienced, where they were not mature, the way they handled you in there. Now you met somebody, the person might not have even done it before. And because he had not done it before, he decided to treat you with some care, some gentleness, and you really loved the way he did it, you see. So, um, when you bring it into the marriage, most of it is a, it's, it's a minus. That is if you don't get to end up with the same person. Yes. It most of it is minus. But not all minus, but most of it is. Yes. Okay, so it's still flames of love, and we have some, some comments and questions here. We are discussing premarital sex, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Please don't forget to send in your comments and your questions, your experiences, share with us, and we'll be so glad to read them out and answer every question that you, you ask. Uh, and Karen is saying that um, a good program. I love your hair and your outfit. Thanks to my, my makeup artist, Grace Nash. You can contact her. Okay, then she asked a question that um, can a man marry you after having sex with you? So please keep the questions um, in mind. I'll, I'll come to that. Can a man or we should answer? Okay, let's let's answer more. Yeah. Can a man marry you after having sex with you? I'm thinking that the question should be, would a man marry you? Not can. No, okay. Can he marry you? Some yes, some no. Some okay. people, uh, uh, some end up marrying the people they have sex with. Mm. It's not all the time that people will have sex with you and leave you. Some end up, there are so many people they have sex with their partners, they end up marrying them. Mm. There are some too, they have sex. That's, that's the, I believe it's a wood because when you say can, then it, it talks about the ability of the person. Mm -hmm. All right, But the wood will be in the fact that the person would have the ability but decides whether to or not to. Mm. Okay. When the person has sex with you, they may decide to or not to. Some came in not because they want to end up in marriage with you. Yeah. So it's not your sex that drove them away. They just came in to have fun. They did not want any sex. Some also, they come in and go like, ah, what kind of toddler have I gone for? I, mean, I, can't, I can't keep up with such a toddler in bed. So I don't want. I mean, just last week, I was speaking to somebody, he told me, plain, he said that, me na me go ba wa say you. E nya bi na ngba be tete ba. You see, you see, I'm not, I'm not going to raise the person sexually. I want the lady that have uh, 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 explored. You see, so somebody may leave you because he didn't feel okay in the bed. Some you may even jump, do monkey, whatever style, and somebody may leave you because he just wanted the sex. Somebody you may not even be good in it, but will just love you. Yeah. Even your immaturity makes the person right. So it depends on the person. Okay, so um, um, Regina Kunsen wants to find us. So because it's happening, we should condone it, even though it's wrong. I think it's for you. Oh, I didn't say we should condone it. What I'm saying is that we should add um, how to handle it when we are telling them not to do it. Because when we tell them, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. And we only highlight the minuses. When they go and try, they, they don't see the minuses. They like, ah, what is this? Or somebody may go in and meet the minus. Okay? But if you have a child and your child will go in and meet the minus, would you not have been happy if you had given the child the safety net mm. to have fallen on? So, yes, highlight the negatives. And of course, um, I already said that the negatives are much more than the positives. Highlight them, okay? And then tell the person that, listen, I don't want you to do it. It's going to affect you negatively in the future. But in case one day you get to fall on the knife, be sure to go with your hand first because it is better to be choked in the hand than in the, in the, in the, in the stomach. You see, you tell them how to be safe with it as well. I mean, now they, they taught us in school. Why were they teaching us? Our teachers who taught us... Um, uh, how to be to be moral and all of that. They also taught us uh, how to use condom and contraceptives and all. They taught us in school as well. It's not they were not teaching us to go and have sex because they were always telling us every Wednesday at worship that don't have sex. But they taught us the other side as well that in case you decide not to listen, this is how to protect yourself. That is a wish you understand. And even with your protection, you can still tell the person 
Every condom is written on every condom and every contraceptive. This condom or this contraceptive cannot protect you 100%. The right is on it. Every condom you pay is written on it. So you can even tell the child that, listen, you should protect yourself this way if you decide not to listen to me. But get to know this, that if you decide to do it, there is a, also another percentage that you are still going to get pregnant even if you use condom or contraceptive. Okay, so, so you see, that is why I would say that hmm. the, the negatives are much too much. Oh, it's true. I'm, I'm yeah, on, I'm, I'm, I something. wouldn't be bad. You see, there's, there's, if there's something and everybody is saying this is no need, then we should be able to understand it. What did people ahead of us or something Continuous studies or something have proven said towing this line is much more costly than this one mm. because apart from biblically, Bible founded on it, even society founds on it, even every other person thinks said to go and I don't rush into it, don't go into the marital. There were too many problems attached to it. I tell people naturally, personally, I'm not somebody who. It's really good at keeping friendship because I realize that there's too much of a job. Mm. We are talking about a relationship. So you go into a relationship, and most people go into it so many, so much. The whole thing is our feelings, feelings, feelings. And we don't understand that it comes with a whole lot of work. Then you add the sex to it, which has its own emotional and everything. And aside that, the person who created it, even in the first place, decided say, it should be between. Husband and a wife. The person so that created it created a man and a woman. They were only two persons. Whether they were married or not, it was not said. They were said the man and the woman. So you see, that is why I do not want to bring in the uh, religious aspect because you, you have people who also bring other points and say that there was this, there was this, there was this, there was that. So that is why any time that I'm talking about these things, multiply. yes, because fruitful and multiplying, I. I Marriage does not cause it because I can be fruitful with you but not be, mar uh, be married to you. That is why I do not, in my submissions, want to bring in the religious aspect. Because even in Christendom, because of course this program is not only for Christians, so fine. Even in Christendom, there are those who have other views. You may quote a scripture, use it for your submission. Someone will quote the same scripture with different interpretation, and it, it will come to a point of. Um, Theology. This one says this, this one says that, and we will not have the book. That's why I like to pick it from the general point. You understand me? That's why I like to pick it from okay, so that. So, this one, Regina again is saying that Osofo doesn't want to talk as a pastor. He said, I don't understand. The Bible is our constitution. Mm. Yes, it's true that sex before marriage is um, prevalent now, even among believers. Mm. This does not make it right. Mm. We should be talking about how to teach our young ones the right thing, even in these dark times. Mm. So that's what uh, is a contribution. Mm. And the uh, local says, so I love you, Aunt Monica. What is wrong is wrong. Also, for stand your grounds, please. <laughs> okay, and um, Eriku Eriku says, nice topic. Uh, Miriam Onuma says, nice topic. And Nancy Doe used to talking, a woman of God, thanks for watching. She said, powerful. And um, um, Loco said a question What is the purpose of sex? For what reason was sex created or made? And when did the first sex happen? And in what context? I believe answers to these questions will give us a good idea as to the implications of premarital sex. Thank you. So we should go into Yeah, that. so we have to go. All right. Yeah. Now, the first uh, couple. Man, woman, okay, man, woman, but in the book of Genesis, it, the, the, you see, the, the Bible was clear. He woke up, he said that this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh, okay. He never said this is my wife, he said I'll call her woman, okay. There was no marriage said, there wasn't anything of that sort, so you cannot bring it down to married and said that it was marriage. You see, if you want me to talk like um, how we are programmed to talk, I will talk like that and you will clap for me. I, 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 will, I, will, I will tickle your fantasy and you will like me. 
because I will speak the way a religious person is supposed to speak, and you will like me. But this is something that we need to understand, that there is, there is no, nothing in Scripture that said clearly, depending on your interpretation of Scripture, that said that sex before marriage is not right. And yet you see, when David slept with Uriah's wife, the, when the Lord came, the Lord did not condemn David that he slept with somebody. The concern was he slept with somebody's wife. And the Lord said, if you wanted more women, I would have given them to you. Why sleep with Uriah's wife? David had concubines, but he was the man of the God's heart, and the Lord never condemned him of it. You understand me? M many would want to quote Corinthians with fornication. And fornication from the, uh, what do you call it, from its etymology and all of that. I mean, you, it's, it's, it's something that we, we, I, 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 do not, I do not want to enter okay. into. So, so he said, she's, she's, she's asking, what's the purpose of sex? The purpose of sex is for uh, entertainment and procreation. Yeah. And you also are, yeah. okay, then she's, the, her second question, for what reason was sex created or made? For uh, uh, the same appropriation. Yes. But just yes. to add up to what um, Osofo said earlier on mm. with the man and woman stuff, the Bible says that the Lord created everything to and he mm. realized that man was a moon and then he made him a hell moon. Mm. Mm. So, in the context of that, um, I want to believe that Adam and Eve was actually made for Adam. Mm. Mm. Even if the Lord didn't mention that this is your wife, but then he said, This is the womb of my God. Not this is my health. Well, she my she looked like him. I mean, when I see a dog and I see a human, I know that this is okay, my kind. So this is my kind. They were made for each other. That time, like you said, they were the only two people. There were no options. There were no options. There was nothing like marriage, but then the Lord born them together, the Lord brought them together. Maybe mm -hmm. it was you. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord asked them to. You know, procreate, increase. Yeah. And then you should have fun. They don't yeah. have whatever sexual thing. Mm. Again, in the book of Hebrews, mm. he also talks about the married bed being mm. not the father. Yes. Mm. So, like the two people coming together, they met on when you are married and you are having sex. There's no problem. No, when you are married, you should not bring another woman to sleep on that bed. When you bring another woman or another man on that bed, or in that home, you have defiled the marriage bed. Yeah, but that's why it's not defiled. He's trying to tell you, so when the two of you make love on that bed, you are not defiled the bed. Oh, mm. I, I, I am not getting your interpretation of it. Okay, I'm saying that the marital bed for the couple, you can't say that they have defiled the bed. But but if I decide to have sex with my girlfriend, mm -hmm. or I have if if I have a girlfriend, yeah. and I decide to have sex with my girlfriend on this couch, I have not defiled the couch, have I? In which way have yeah. I defiled the couch? Yes, the and what are the implications that will somebody sit on this couch and not go to heaven, or will somebody no, lose no, a blessing? No, no, no. But when something is so, defiled, no, no, I'm confused. You, so, <laughs> you see, that's why I don't want it to be. Um, uh, okay, we are not looking at it. As I, a, I don't want to say because it's not only um, Christians that are watching. Yes. I've, I've seen Muslims uh, commenting here, and. Um, uh, we have traditionalist people yes. following and they are yeah. all watching. That is why from the onset I kept saying, say, apart from you know the spiritual thing, which we put aside, even our society, mm. morally, mm. we're going up, our parents will tell you, you know, before you go in, why were they telling us all that? So that time, you know, from they didn't even have much knowledge about Christianity or whatever. They will just Tell you, say, take your time. Don't you know? Don't get into it earlier. Meaning that probably over the years they've realized there's something, or there has been recurring situations that might have led to this thing. That if people go into it early or without being married and they keep going into it, they have these kinds of problems. So in order to save you from some of these kinds of problems, wait until you marry. Like when you are in it, you two can explore together, make the mistakes. Do ever and grow together. Mm -hmm. So aside the spiritual things, I think that even our moral society frowns on this. Why? I mean, there might be something that might have happened previously or currently that it has gone on for people to understand. Just pass. Why we? Why we? Fast one. 
and say that you behave like a And it ends well for some people, but on the larger majority, say me here, or it's a very very fat man. So for me, I think that is why. There's another. Um, so I want to contribute. What, what I want to say is, mm -hmm. most of so the, the things, thing, like most of the things we teach people, we stand by, we talk about. They are traditions that have been passed on to us, and we have not scrutinized them. We have not subjected them to um, test. We just, we, it was handed down to us, and we we are handing uh, we are handling it down to the next generation without scrutinizing it, without really opening it up. If, I, if you want to talk about sex before marriage and all of this, you realize that even from the Bible times to, uh, um, let's say, our traditions and all of that, you realize that the whole thing, the frowning upon it, was not about the man, it was about the woman. You look, check through the Bible, you see, even the woman that was about to be stoned, yeah. the man was let go, it was the woman. So I'm telling you that there is something about this thing that is not only about this, the intercourse necessarily. Okay, we need to look at this in a broader perspective. How would you feel if your daughter marries a man who is an impotent because they never had sex? She didn't know. How would you but feel? Would what like would you say? Okay, what if your daughter, for, God forbid, what, okay, let me use something. What if somebody's daughter becomes that one out of a thousand married to that person? What would we do? We will see because, hell. Because what I'm telling you that like this this case no, that I told you about. Because then one, you know you are impotent, and then you came to uh -huh. you deceived me in the first place. But we are married. So, yes, we are married. But who says married is some kind of um, a prison? Okay. Oh, okay. You, you no, understand no, this, me? Because the same scriptures we are quoting, the Bible that we are quoting to back this is the same Bible that is saying that. Not the most. So I love the person. The person is impotent. Let's go and seek help. Would you want your child to marry? My child you? didn't know. My child has okay, so seek help. Yeah, and, the, and the help is telling you that uh, this guy's something something. He's going to talk. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So the help is saying, say, oh, I don't want any help. Any help, you must worry about it. That is it. Ah, it's going your favorite ways. We'll be against the same scripture that you are quoting to back the sex before marriage matter. That do not divorce. Would it not be? This thing? <laughs> Would it not be that? That's it. Because it's the Bible that is telling you. No, but then if you think, say, mm. morally, so because if you are saying all this, then it means that what you are telling us is that it's okay to go into it and find out if the person is impotent or not. And I'm saying, say, look, with this point, uh, back to back, we can have people, it shouldn't be a reason, an excuse to be having, then if not, if you have multiple relationships, you end up sleeping with all of them. How do you end up in a multiple relationship? That means you are confused. You're not confused. This How would you be in a multiple relationship at the same time? You are confused. No, no. multiple at the same time. Okay, no, from one person to the other. other. And then it's okay, so what? And happened? by the grace of God, I found somebody. That person to understand so, whether the person no, is going to be protected. Maybe we should so talk I about that. Finding out How did you jump from this, 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 this? That's and why were you giving it? No, not for relationship. That's uh -huh. the things that bring breakages in relationship. It's all God. But now we are going on pre-marital sex. If, to you personally, you believe that it is immoral, depending because of your background. That is okay. Which is background? Society itself. Yes, society differs. That is your society. That is how you were raised. Okay. No, but, uh, but there is somebody watching us from America, uh, Germany, other places that they are very okay. In fact, if you have not had sex with a person after dating for two months, three months, it's, it's, it's rather odd. How about that one? So I'm telling you that. We, and we are, we are, in America, you are talking about look at the problems that young people go through. Young people have been going through problems before we were born, even uh, in, in thousands of years ago. It, we should not make it seem as if the things we are seeing started today. They've been there. No, it's no, just that they are being popularized now. Right. Okay. So, so um, right or wrong is dependent on the persons involved. That is my, all that I'm saying. Okay. Because you can. So look, let's let's go I ahead. Look everyone. We can't be arguing and arguing time here because else we won't um, um, uh, uh, talk about the whole. We can't dissolve it. I want us to get to the bottom of this mm. before our time and um, uh, uh, catches up with us. And um, uh, Madame Fedora says I agree with the uh, auntie. Sin is sin. But there should be redemption for the sinner, yeah. and that's where the Say divorce, marriage is my sin. Please let me talk. Here. And that's where the surface point comes in. What what next after that fornication? 
Must the fornicator be left or, or to rot? Okay. Must the fornicator be left to rot? No. Knowing this generation, even if you want some of if what you no no let me get it. Knowing this generation, if it, even if you want, some will still do it. Some will still do their do. Yeah. So there has to be education on that too. Okay, so um, it's a double-edged sword that she's throwing here. She said she agrees with Auntie and uh, uh, Monica, but sin is sin, which is against the fact that um, we should we shouldn't talk about it because you are saying though we should talk about it, but we shouldn't. Uh, we should talk about the disadvantages and advantages, everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why she's yeah. saying yeah. that we can't leave the person who has already engaged in it. But however, we should educate the person yeah. for the person to get out of it. So it means that we shouldn't be in it. We shouldn't even go in it in the first place. You see, when we want to talk about, yeah. if we want to talk about this, how did the person end up in it in the first place? It's a, it's a, it's a whole yeah. thing, okay? But my point from the beginning has been that let's talk about the minuses and add the uh, plus. If you don't want to talk about a plus because of your child and you don't want the child to child, teach the child how to receive around that thing. Because there are children or there are some people, no matter what, all the dangerous pictures you paint to them, they will get into it. So my point is that bring how they can protect themselves when they decide to enter into it. We should add it to it. And not only to say that it is wrong. We should add that side to it. That side is something that we have not been giving our children from the house. But they have been told in the school. And I'm telling you that in school, you are told that um, to prevent marriage, use condom, use contraceptives, uh, there are pills, uh, so that you don't even get pregnant to, for abortion to happen and all of those stuff. They are told in school. But when we come home, we don't want to talk about these things. We want to talk about. Oh, you, I don't think that is it. Like, like I was saying, let me tell my own daughter for you. Did your mother sit down to tell her about like My own daughter, let me tell you, um, let's say. She's in her teens now. Mm. So I told her, you will have your um, normal natural flow and all that. That means that if you sleep with a man, there's a possibility that you can get pregnant. And I asked her, see the way people have been eating this, do you know how we be bringing food into the world? Man, you this one, no money, no okay. Let me make it simple for you. If you decide to get pregnant today, I won't kill you. I love you, you are my daughter. Now you are pregnant. If you are fortunate and then you are able to find whoever I'm pregnant, the only thing is that the person must take care of you. So you know what to do. If you take care of the son of your own child, you have to think of feeding the baby, clothing the child, providing for the child to go to school. Hey, mommy, how can I do all this? Says, hey, that means you are not ready. So because you can't do all this once, and there are other more things which probably for the sake of time you can't do as well. That is why you have no business going into premarital sex now. But it doesn't mean you can't have male friends. Have male friends, learn all that you can learn. Um, you know about the contraceptives that can prevent you from this and that and that. You are not condemning the child. You are not saying you are not teaching them. But then we will let you, we must let them know that this path, this path itself, has too many complications. If you are not ready for it, just stay away from it. And then focus. So that when you get into marriage, because remember, marriage itself and the sex that we are talking about, even in marriage, has its own problems. It's not as if say in marriage it is perfect. Mm. It has its own problems to deal with. So let us all understand from the beginning that we are not saying say um, it is like you are the, the, the evil demon just because you want to have premarital sex. Mm. But because of the problems that are associated with it, we probably you might not be ready to handle. Stay away from it. Just have your male friends, your female friends, or your female whatever, girlfriends or whatever. Learn from each other, be happy, explore everything. But then this particular one, wait, because it has too many complications. And once you even enter into marriage, it's not like it has ended there. It comes along with other problems. So that when you learn rather and you get in there, both of you can learn together, make the mistakes together, correct yourself together, and then you flow together. Rather than starting it now, Having all the burdens and the complications which you can't even handle, mm. getting into marriage and adding that one will be like a double problem, and it will be too much for you. You can't handle that's the thing. Okay, so um, um, Nuloko is saying that please, I believe the first sex happened in the context of marriage, 
uh, in Genesis 2, 23 to 25, the Bible made mention of the woman being his wife before sex, and he, and he knew his wife. Mm -hmm. Genesis 4, verses 1. So that's... Um, I, 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 I will not enter into theology. Mm -hmm. I have said that if I come here as a pastor, there are people that would also not be okay watching because of maybe their religious background. So when I come here, the reason why I said I am not talking as like a pastor is not because I decide not to be a pastor, but I decide to be a counselor on the set than a pastor. Because we have people from different backgrounds, different religions, different um, settings watching. Okay, marriage in Christianity is different from marriage in maybe Hindu, different from marriage in um, Islam, uh, Shinto, and all of that. But there are certain things that are underlying currents in all of them. That is why I like to go that way. Because if I want to stick to Bible, I said, if I want to breathe, that is a sin. You will clap for me. If I want to breathe, that is not a sin. You will clap for me. I understand grace, and I, I understand the no, but condemnation we are teaching message. People, so let's teach them the, the, right, the right thing is that you cannot, in any way, say that blanket is not good or is not. You see, she spoke in the context of a teenager, so there is a way you speak to a teenager about it, mm -hmm. and there is a way you speak to a a, a now adult and a, a very uh, in quotes grown adult or something. Do you understand me? Every contest and how you present it. That is why I said from the beginning that it is dependent on the persons involved. That's I don't want us to say it is wrong outright or it is right outright. Okay? We, we, we have to have a demarcation to know who and who are involved. Because I would by no means pick a child and tell the child, even if he start talking about a condom and all of that with the child. Okay? A teenager. I would have a way to talk to a teenager. When a parent comes to me with a child for counseling, there is a way I will counsel a child with a particular problem. If that same problem, when a different set of person from a different background comes, I will have a way to talk to that person. A child that had lived in East Lebanon, in fact, the East Lebanon, you watch a so many people, and then we be not I don't know. You know, when I say, when we say East Lebanon, we have a mindset. Now, and a child that has lived in, let's say, some either Zongo, Chemo, uh, uh, Chopo, or some, some place. We, I mean, we know this, is, we are not demeaning it. We are only saying it because we know it. We know how these settings are. Those two children facing the same problem, you can't counsel them with the same lines. No, their background, their settings are different. So you know, you, you, you have a way of talking to each of them. Maybe uh, uh, it's like uh, a child living in five bedroom house, you tell them, when these things happen, just go to your room and listen to music. When they are, or they are my papa, my uncle, my new penny. I mean, there are like 10 people in a single room. Where would the child go? You see, so when you are talking to uh, people, you talk to them based on their background. For me, I believe that we have values. Okay. Right from the onset, whatever values we train people with, we live with them. Mm. Yes, as they are going, there might be diversions, people can fall along the line, there might be mistakes. We are not saying 100%, you know, this is what we've been told, so we go by it. They are exceptions. Like you rightly said, somebody will say, why would um, God decide that a child born out of David and Bathsheba should become the king? That marriage in itself is questionable. Mm. Yeah, but all I'm saying is that when it comes to premarital sex, I think that from the onset, we have basic values as a people. We have basic values. And apart from biblically, I didn't tell my children, look, even if the Bible is not there, to tell you that that's a lost thing. If you take some of these things that are not belong to you, more actually, it will lynch you to death. And on a net biblical, but it will be very cool, simple. Or, you can go to prison because the laws of the land too does not allow you to do so. Bible living aside, as a people, we have common values. And growing up, we are being nurtured by some of these values. So what we tell ourselves or what we train ourselves for from the onset, that's what we go with. And yes, along the line, some children will fall off. I'm not sure those who go into 
all these drugs and stuff like that, they were actually groomed to become like that. Mm. But then along the line, peer groups, so many factors can get in for people to fall off. But for me, from the onset, let's give them the values. So that even if in the context of no Bible, mm. I think it would be best for everybody to at least, if you have the opportunity, wait till you get into marriage before you engage in all the sexual activities. That alone, I don't think it's too much to ask of anybody. But then there are exceptions, yes. So many things can happen along the line. People can be abused, people can be raped, people can fall into bad companies and then they, they might be introduced. So that is why we would generally advise everybody on the fact that, oh, maybe they are from the set, there are things you can do, abstain, and uh, apart from abstinence, there are problems and all that. But then the main thing is the main thing. If everybody is saying that this particular thing is not good, it means that there might be something, or some studies have shown over the years, things have happened to us before we say, this thing, if it's done to a, it brings problems. So let's tell our, our people, or whoever we are telling them, if there's a way you can wait, please wait. Okay, it pays to wait. wait. Okay, so now the things you are talking about, about uh, waiting and all that, let's let's just delve into the disadvantages because um, we spoke earlier about the advantages and all that. I want us to know, apart from pregnancy, that we all know that mm -hmm. when you engage in premarital sex, that is what you get as the lady. What are the disadvantages for both sides, the ladies and the guys? What are some of the things that... Um, uh, that doesn't go well when you have premarital sex. Okay, um, Before we come to you, okay. Um, apart from pregnancies, you can also have the STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, that is if you don't protect yourself mm -hmm. from some of those things. And then also, like I said, the emotional trauma. Because most people are not able to share with people, like, I've gone in with this person. So that the guilt and then the emotional trauma some people carry along just because I, I slept with this one probably didn't work and maybe I, this one came along I slept with the person so some cannot forgive themselves for all the things that they've gone through they too are they're not able to open up to anybody because they feel they might be condemned hey it's only way hey only way and then there's no joy and also into marriage some of these things can go as far as affect then they married as we earlier on said, for example, in our behalf. So for me, I think mean, these are some of the basic things that will be best if you can, or if there's an opportunity for you to do it. Well, <laughs> I believe that if you want to do this, the disadvantage is that it can make you compare someone to the person that you are going to spend the, you, or you are supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be challenging for you. You, you. you will thank God if the previous one was worse and this one that you are having is better. Mm -hmm. But if the previous one is better than the one that you are deciding to settle with, it becomes a problem for you. You will be thinking about it, how he spoke with you, how, um, you see, it's not even only about sex so. Because maybe you never even had sex, but the way he spoke to you, and you parted ways, and now you, are, you ended up with this person that the way he speaks, you don't like. You see, but today we're talking about sex, so the sex issue, the comparison is my main concern. The comparison, you see, and also, I think I should dance around and say that we should not be. Um, see people demonizing partners when they they feel like talking to us and they tell us personal things about them you know fine the person may not be speaking uh, about it or talking about it in, uh, in a way to boast or maybe the person has it on the chest and feel like bringing it out i said there are some people that they don't care they are they can sleep with million people they don't care they have no guilt nothing there is nothing but they will ask why, why should i be if you feel guilty about it you see but there are those that they they, they die in their mind it, if they are they, they they don't know the way they could come out of their, their body so i i would say that if you are young and you are not ready for marriage don't even start dating if you don't even start it because you started it when you were in shs 
let's say you have five, ten years ahead of you. Can you stay in this thing for that long? Even though there are examples. But I mean, how many? How many? And are you sure you can stay with this for that long and not touch each other? With the STDs, I, I agree, but I will say that. If we want to talk about STDs, then we should add kissing. Then we should tell them, don't kiss. Because STD can be, transmit, can be transmitted through kissing. You understand not me? All. Not all. Well, not, when there is an opening in your mouth, let's say I brush my teeth. No, 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 no. Gonorrhea, I have no. Oh, I mean, uh, gonorrhea is not as dangerous as a, a, a HIV or syphilis <laughs> or chlamydia, you know? <laughs> gonorrhea, I mean, with some antibiotics, uh, maybe you can uh, dance around. But, but HIV. They are all dangerous. So they are, yes, they are all dangerous. But, you know, I mean, in in, in, uh, in a hierarchical change, I mean, I think that the HIV is, you know, some way. So I think that we should start from telling them the people, not only the children, people that listen. It's not only about pregnancy, because when we were growing, it's all about the pregnancy, the, 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 the minus of the pregnancy and all that. Yeah, people didn't know about STDs. STDs, okay, fine. Now, we should rather tell them that, listen, you can have these kind of diseases through this. I have had this fear for a very long time. The traditional marriages that we have, do, do they make the people go for tests like we, we've been doing with church people? I don't know about the Islam side. I don't know, so I can't talk about that. I, I don't know about the uh, other, other Buddhists and all that. I don't know about them. I am a pastor. I, 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 I bless marriage, so I know about our side. With this, you, we have tests that we line up. We tell you, go and do this, 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 this. this. Do they do it in a traditional setting? Or if I want to do a traditional marriage, I just bring the drink, my, your parents like me, my parents like you, we do it. No, but you see, formally... I'm just asking. I'm just, just a moment, just mm. to answer this one. Formally, for me, I think that in a way, that is why even premarital sex, they were telling us not to be engaged in it. Because those days, families would go and check. Even though there was no form of, uh, you could go and check whether you have... Uh, madness in your family. Left yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. You see, so mm -hmm. there was some kind of a check. Yeah. Imagine if you had been sleeping with this person already, you are already pregnant. They go and check and all these things are there. Your parents and say, if you come out from this home, this, these things are there. So even your things were not there to check for STDs and other things. Mm -hmm. I think there was some form of on their level. They tried to do some kind of a check. Well, I think that it was a so, stigmatization, you know, because you can have, I can have, uh, there can be a mad face in my family. There are three diseases. Uh, oh, so okay. Well, if you find out that there, there is diabetes in my family, would you let me not marry a person? I am thinking that, to me, I am thinking that, I mean, the, this thing that I said, it's my concern. No, a we, big will, concern. We, will, we will talk yeah. about it um, some other time. Yeah, but, but let's deal with it. With, 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 with the disadvantages, mm. I, I will just tell you that. If you are not ready for marriage, don't even start the dating. Because if you stay in for long, the tendency to have the sex will be very high. Very, very high. And the temptation thereof is difficult. Mm. So if you are not ready to get married, or you are not in the age that you think that at this time I am ready to mingle and get married, don't start the whole show. In fact, don't start the whole show. You are a lot of people have experienced um, uh, what we call this. Uh, disappointments, not because the people they met were necessarily bad, mm -hmm. but because they were both immature, so they didn't even know how to handle themselves. Yeah. So all the negative experiences that they have had was based on the sex they had or the kind of relationships they had before. Now it has created a mindset in their mind, uh, uh, created a, a stronghold in their mind, okay, about maybe men or about women, say that men are like this or women are like that. Because they, they were immature and they were also with immature people. Mm -hmm. So it, it can also affect them. Now you have a certain mind about men, a certain mind about women, and you enter into marriage with it. Yeah. So this can really, really affect you. How you think of men, how you think of women. So I, I, I believe that grow, allow yourself to grow, okay? Then when you even enter into it, you even though you might not have being in a relationship before, you've been much matured in your mind, and even when it comes to sex, with the ladies especially, just a sweet word will not let you open your legs. Because when you are younger, a lot of things entice you. 
you be intrigued by a lot of things. And the person may still say something, no, 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 no. But when you allow yourself to grow a bit, they will say something and you're like, oh, no, I feel like my DVD I'm You see? So I, I, I think that if we allow ourselves to grow a bit, it, it, it can help us. And also this uh, things will help. Let me add one. I think sexual satisfaction is because then if you have multiple ones or you have three marital sins, then you get into marriage and you're not really getting what you want, then that satisfaction is not there. It's like it. And and stop watching porn. Stop watching porn. Okay, so let me read. The person my, watching me should stop watching let porn. Let me read because so that we come, can, we come for the, <laughs> the final words. Uh, We've done now an hour already. Mm. So um and Stella, I see a dude says mm. my my house captain is talking says Aunt Monica, big house yeah. to you. <laughs> and um, um Regina Kumse is saying great discussion. Also for has has kind of clarified his stand. I like his closing remarks. However, most religious, most religion, I think that's what she's trying to say, frown on sex before marriage. It's true. Auntie Monica highlighted this very well. Okay, um, it's Kujo, true. Kujo, Michael Kojo Yamsin, hi, he's watching from the UK. He said, okay, uh -huh. hey, great job, great job. Thank you so much, thank you. Okay, so um, I want to find out the final word. If someone is watching, a young person, a young adult, if the person is watching, what, sh what are you going to tell the person about premarital sex, the way forward, the right thing to do, and the decision to take? Okay. For the good, I mean, those who have not done it before, and those who have done it before, okay. what's the way forward? Okay, so I'll start with those who have done it before. Okay. And um, what I'll say is, if you've done it before, it doesn't mean you should condemn yourself. Mm. You have no business condemning yourself because from where I'm coming from, as a woman of God, I've also learned that somebody else has taken away all her sins. So, like I keep telling people, if you tell me, oh, I've done this before, I, then I ask you, what happened to the blood of Jesus? Mm. Is it not enough to take care of that for you? So behold, that one is passed. That is, if you have done it before, you think, I want to start a refresh it. Just understand that you are justified based on the finished work on the cross, not by your own works. And then moving forward, I'll say those who haven't done it before, they too, if there's a way that you can abstain, abstain. Because for me, the dangers are much more weightier than the positive side. Mm -hmm. So in order to save yourself so many things, because as a young person, probably you have school, you have work, you have so many things to learn and prepare yourself Get yourself ready to enter into marriage. So why don't you give yourself that opportunity to be happy as a young person, explore and learn all that you need to do. And when you get into marriage, too, it comes with its own problems and wahala. When it gets there, you take care of that. One. Rather than starting with sexual problems before carrying that baggage into marriage to give you extra problems. So if there's a way to abstain, please wait till you get married. Okay. Listen. Today we've spoken about sex before marriage, and I know some of you that it is not a person having sex with you, but you having sex with yourself. It will also affect your marriage. Think about this, because when you end up in a marriage. That man or that woman may not be able to pleasure you the way you've been pleasuring yourself. So avoid these things, all right? Now, if you are not ready for marriage, don't even start dating. Don't start dating. And start dating when you know you have come of age, you are mature. So that you will not be, you will not be followed by a lot of people. Because you don't know where you will end up one day. And some some guy and the senior probably because say he has been with you before, or some girl somewhere will bring some scandal. So it's better that you don't do it at all. But if you have, hey, you can't kill it, you can't kill yourself, but you can't erase it. This has already happened. But what I will tell you is this: it's better to abstain. That is the best. If you are my daughter, my son. I would want you to abstain because normally if you have not slept with any uh, somebody 
your attachment to them is lesser. And when there comes an issue where you need to pull away from them, it makes it easier. So I am pleading with you. I will not condemn you. If my Lord Jesus, in whose stead I stand and preach, have not condemned me, I will not condemn you. I don't know your religious background. I don't know your belief. But I will not condemn you for doing it. But I will tell you this. There are repercussions of every action, every decision that you make. And this deciding to sleep with somebody before your marriage, there are so many minuses that can affect you. So abstain, abstain, abstain. Just abstain from this, please. And don't have that mindset of the pornography, the pornographic pictures or pornography uh, videos that you've been watching on Pornhub and all of those stuff. Remember, the things you are watching, they are cut and join, cut and join. You've been watching, probably seeing a guy sleeping with a lady for a long period, and you think that is how it happens in the real world. Well, it doesn't happen that way. It can also affect your marriage. You may not be sleeping with a person as a person, person. But you might be watching these things. It can worry your marriage as well. Please, abstain. I will not even say if possible. I will tell you, even if you have done it before with your partner, make a decision and abstain. Because it can really, really affect you negatively. Hold yourself. Control yourself. Understand this. Sex doesn't keep marriage. Even though sex is an instrument in marriage, it's not sex that keeps it. Because you will not be having sex every day, every day, every day. And if you want to have sex because, or you want to give sex to your partner because you think that will make them faithful, let me tell you something. Sex or marriage is not even an antidote to fornication or infidelity. It's a decision you make. You make a decision that I don't want to do this. I want to stay faithful to my husband. I want to stay faithful to this person, whether they give me the sex or not. So make a decision. Don't, don't live with fantasies and the movies you watch. Movies are written sometimes by experiences, some other times by people's fantasy. So don't watch certain movies and think that that is how the world is. The world isn't us you always see in the movies. And your, your favorite celebrities, and you'll be reading about them and they and their boyfriends. Ask yourself, how many of them end up in marriages? And those that end up in marriages, how long do they stay in there? Don't preach fantasy to yourself. To all of your ability, abstain. That's what Prophet Allah will tell you. Okay, thank you so much um, um, for, for having I, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I thank you for coming, and I thank you also for, for coming. And Always a pleasure. I, <laughs> this is a dicey and a difficult topic to talk about. <laughs> and, you know, I understand all the, the, the ups and downs and all that because um, you are not having a particular, just the particular people watching. You have, you, people are watching from yeah. diverse places, and you have to ensure that you, you touch on all these things. So you, you, you have really, really done well. And, we will talk about it and talk about it and talk about it because we want sanity in, in our homes, in our in our countries and in our in our religious setting, in our traditional setting, we need people who have virtue. So um it's been a great day, a great show, and an educative one for that matter. And at the end of the day, bear in mind that sex do not keep marriage. Yes. Sex do not um, promise um, um, marriages. If someone is telling you that, okay, give me sex, let me sleep with you and marry, and so that I will marry you, it is not true. Yeah. The person will sleep with you. Well, the person can decide to marry, but at the end of the day, the person is not going to marry you. If the person is giving you that condition before the person marries you, it means that the person doesn't love you because love in itself is not all about sex. So you can't decide. You can decide on doing whatever you want to do, but at the end of the day, weigh the, the options. Look at the disadvantages as they have spoken about, apart from the pregnancy and the STDs and all that. Will you be happy with the partner you choose after having um, a lot of sex previously? Will you be happy? Will your partner be okay? 
let's all put this at the back of our mind. It's a place that we are all learning. We are not condemning anyone. You, whether you have done it or not, there is always time. Once you are alive, you have life, you, there is hope. So let's all keep talking and dialoguing and educating ourselves about these things. And let's find a way to have a sanity in our homes and our houses. I thank you so much for watching. And my makeup and hair was done by Grace Nash. And so is my guest. She, she does wordings, makeup for wordings, hair for wordings, um, the naming ceremony, dinner. Anything that you need makeup and hair for, just contact her and you can reach her on 0242-036095, 0242-036095. And I thank you so much, Karen and Achu, for designing our flyers for Flames of Love. God really bless you. And I thank you, Richetaria, for um, doing the production work. Um, you do the majority of the day. Without you, you won't be on the set, you know. Thank you so much and God bless you. And I thank you, uh, Mr. Sadden, for your support. And I thank you, Auntie Monica, for making time. For making time. God really bless God, you. God. And thank you, Prophet, all the time you are here. And we, we can't we can just overlook it. God bless each and every one of you. And she is the CEO of Divinely <laughs> Detailed Collection. Anything fabric, anything um, and women and men dresses. She is into it. So if you need a fabric, you need a dress, a shirt for that occasion, you can contact her and she will be glad to serve you. Thank you so much for being with us. And do join us same time on Friday, right here on Facebook, on Flames of Love with me, between Senaju. And have a blessed week and a fruitful week. Bye-bye.